So just the way we have seen how to insert and delete, right? We have seen how to insert and delete into a singly linked list. Now let's look at other operations. One operation is called traversal. One operation is called traversal. The other operation is search, right? You can define many more operations on singly linked lists, but traversal basically means that to traverse, uh, to basically, to be able to, let's say, let's say this is my linked list. Let's say, let's say this is my linked list, right? Let's assume this is my linked list. This is null. Okay, there is 13, let's say six and 12. Traversal basically means that I'm given the head node, I should be able to go through each of these nodes in the singly linked list. And if I want to process them or print them, I should be able to do it. Traversal basically means going through each of these, each of these nodes and be able to access the information in each of the nodes. That's what traversal means. And actually we have done traversal. Like for example, when we were trying to insert at the end, we were, we actually performed traversal and then went to the last node and inserted at the last, inserted at the very end, right? Even for deletion, we use traversal inherently because to delete an element that was somewhere in between, for example, if I had to delete this, right? I have to start at head. I have to use these pointers, right? To move from one node to the other node. So I've already done this, but I'll show you some code to do it. Similarly, search. If I want to search in my, in my singly linked list, if there is a node whose info or whose data is six, how do I do that? Again, it's very simple. I traverse and I'll simply search for it, right? Very simple. So let's go through the code. It's very, very straightforward. I'm given the head node, right? I'm given the, not the head node, sorry, the head pointer, which points to the first node, right? Which points to the first node. Let's assume I have these four nodes here and the last one, let's say is pointing to null. Okay, let's say this is 13, six, 12 and 25. Okay, so what do I do here? If head is equal to null, right? If head, if the, if the whole singly linked list is null, which means there is nothing here. <coughs> I'm sorry. If there is nothing here to, to traverse, I'll just say list is empty. This is a boundary case that we are handling or else I'll say, okay, so this is a boundary case, right? The other case that I'll handle is I'll create a pointer P. I'll create a pointer P that points to head. So P equals to head. And here I'm trying to print because this function here is display. So I'll traverse through the list and I'll print each of these infos. In each node, there is an info section, right? Which I'll try to print. So P is equal to head, which means P will now point to the first node, right? While P is not equal to null, <coughs> I'm again, sorry. So while P equal, P is, P is not equal to null, print P info. This is the printf, right? What am I printing here? I'm printing P info. So first I'll print 13, right? Then I'm changing my P to P link. So once I've printed 13, I'll change my P instead of pointing it to this, it will point to P link. What is P link here? P link basically means the next node that this points to. I'll keep doing it. So I'll, I'll point now, this is a while loop. Look at this. This is a while loop. This is a while loop. So I'll keep processing each of these nodes. Then I'll print six, then I'll print 12, then I'll print 25. Finally, after I print 25, look at this. After I have printed 25, Okay, so let's assume I have printed 25. Now my P will now point to P link, which means my P will point to null, right? Because, because I'm updating my P here, after I printed each of these nodes values, I'm updating my P link. So as soon as my P equals to null, this while loop will terminate, right? So I'm basically accessing each of these elements one after the other in the order, remember, I'm accessing these elements in the order that they are present in, right? Very, very simple. I'm doing, I'm not just going randomly and picking some element. I'm starting with the first element and then the second element, then the third element, then the fourth element and so on and so forth, right? This is, this simple snippet of code is basically traversal through the linked list and printing each of them. Okay, very simple. Obviously, you can also count. Very similar thing. You can count the number of elements in the list. Very simple. You just create a variable called count. And this code is very similar to this. If you look here, this code is this while loop is very similar to this while loop, except that you're incrementing your count here. If you look at the code here, you're printing here. I'm not printing anything. I'm simply incrementing my count. 
Okay, and I'll print the number of elements at the end. Done. Right? So count is another operation that I can define on a singly linked list to count the number of elements in the list. Right? So now let's look at search. Search also very similar idea. It's a very, very simple concept. Right? Let's see. So here, what do I have here? I have my head. I have my head. Let's say head is pointing to 13, which is pointing to 6. Again, this internally is pointing to, let's say, 12, which internally is, let's say, pointing to 25, which is pointing to, let's say, null. Okay, very simple. Now, it has two parameters, the pointer and the item that I want to search. For example, this, let's say, this item is equal to 12. Now, I want to know if my singly linked list with the head pointer as head contains an item with 12 or not. Okay, how do I do it now? Very simple. I create a temporary pointer. I create P, which points to head. And I'll, so here I'm creating a position called, here I'm also creating a position. Okay. The position equals to one. So basically now P is pointing to the first element. And hence I've, I've initialized my position variable to one. Now look at this, look at this while loop. This while loop is very similar to what we have seen earlier for traversal, right? While P is not equal to null. Right. Okay. So if P info equals to item. Okay. Is P info. What is P info? P info is this. Is this equal to item? No. So this loop won't run. If it is not equal, then what happens? P equals to P link, which means this P will now stop being point, stop pointing here and the P will point here because of this line. And I'm incrementing my position. So what happens to my position now? My position was one. Now my position equals to two. This while loop will keep running. Okay. Now again, I'll see if P info, which is six, is it equal to 12? No, it is not equal to 12. So what do I do? I'll just increment. I'll just move my P to point to the next element using this line and I'll increment my position to three. Now again, I'll check is P info equals to item. Yes. P info is 12 and item is also 12. They both match immediately. What do I say? I say item 12 is found at position three. Okay. Look at this printf statement in C and I'll go out of this function because I'm returning. So as soon as I find an item, I'll say, I found this item whose value is equal to 12 at position three and I'm done. Right? So writing any code with respect to singly linked list is all about following these pointer logic. It's a very simple concept. You can write the code very easily as long as you have this diagrammatic representation. So my strong suggestion is whenever you're writing singly linked list code in any language, be it be C, C++, Java or Python or any language for that matter, just make sure that you draw diagrams like these because they help you visualize what you're exactly doing. Of course, the syntax will change. In C, you have pointers, C++, you have pointers. Java and Python, you have references. Okay, the, the language specific things will change, but the conceptual idea will not change. Right. And look at it. If I want to search an element, that's another important point. If I want to search an element in a singly linked list, my worst case time complexity is order of n because I'll have to go through each of these elements in the order. I have to go through each of these elements in the order and search for the element that I want. Worst case, if the item that I'm searching for is the last element then it will be order of n, right? Worst case time complexity for searching in a singly linked list is order of n. Very simple, very clean idea.